Hello and welcome to the vlog. Yet another one starting in the van. If you're new here, this is the See the Sights channel, as you saw probably by the title. And here I like to remind you that to the world you may be one person, but to one person you may be the world. So go be somebody's world. And today I am headed to pick up my daughter Hudson from school. She has a rehab clinic appointment and I don't remember what for because we were just there like three weeks ago for uh, Botox injections and now we're going back and I don't know like again I don't know what for. Yesterday we were at the Children's Mercy downtown location for the follow-up on her spine surgery which was back in November by the way, today is the 22nd of April. Anyway, picking her up early from school, driving her over to the Kansas location for uh, this appointment for Children's Mercy, I am uh, noticing that my air conditioner apparently is not working. Oh, good. I'm gonna have to take the van to the shop. Great just spent a bunch of money on our other car for a clutch and brakes. Now I get to spend money for an air conditioner. It is kind of hot today. 83 degrees right now. Yay! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab her. Let's go find out what this appointment is. Of course, always hard to film at Children's Mercy, but uh, I do what I can and get what footage I can while we're there. We are high in the metro, about 83. Few clouds overnight, mid-60s and windy. All right. I uh, don't know if I should text. Sometimes, I, most of the time, I pull up and out she comes, but sometimes I have to text. So I'm gonna go ahead and text. recliner over here comfy yep that's what we figured <laughs> so that way there's because we every time we were like it's been when she's been in her chair that it's right that's been an issue so are you gonna take a nap on me now yeah she's, she's like i've been awake all morning ah, i Dad. saw the sneaky <laughs> thank you Dan. thank you so much we'll see you monday okay. in uh previous video I was mentioning her. She's been a little gaggy lately, but it's because we are reducing 
her Pepsid uh, from four mils twice a day to three mils twice a day and we're actually working down to try to get to two mils twice a day. We're at two weeks on the three mils twice a day and we've seen a little more of the of of puking. And the problem is that half of the puking is like you can tell it's tummy uh, upset tummy puking and then the other half actually probably more than half is she just doesn't control her spit really well so spit gathers goes down the wrong pipe snowballs into gagging and and, and ends up being a puke we're gonna give the three mils we were supposed to jump down to two mils this week but I think we're gonna give the three mil amount one more week to see if it levels out however I do have to get a note from Hudson's doctor talking about the fact that she may puke at school now Hudson's been at this school for five she's in she's almost done with fifth grade she's been at this school she started halfway through kindergarten so five and a half years it's never been an issue and Hudson's always been kind of a pukey kid so there's a new school nurse that fills in occasionally and you can kind of hear the teacher kind of saying well you know turns out it's always that nurse that's the problem so whatever just gonna follow suit and do what the, the the other nurse needs however it was she did call the other day and she was very condescending and uh, just I don't know. I don't like I don't like to be bossed around. I like to be talked to uh, as an equal. And she kind of tried to get bossy with me. And it's like really funny because it's like, it, let's just say I bark back. <laughs> so uh, that's why I think she pushed harder to get the the note from the doctor, which is fine. It's fair. It's, I don't know. I appreciate people looking out for Hudson. I uh, I also think that some people are a little overly dramatic about things. You can hear her teacher, who has known her for a long time, saying, we know how to handle it, basically. We know our girl. But it is what it is. Don't want to get too deep in the drama, but a little drama. But we got a month left. We got a month left of school. What are we worried about? Wait. <laughs> Anyway, duty butts, did you, oh, did you have a seizure back there? That's, that's the sucky thing about driving where it's just her and I, not having an extra person with me, but. Uh, it's probably a little bit of the heat that's bugging me too. <laughs> wow, let the, let's air in here. All right, you see over here, there's two spots. Those are van accessible. Now we're gonna go around. See if there are many or any more available. Oh wait, here's some, okay. Because uh, that side of the building is not wheelchair accessible. All right, kid, you ready? So I uh, thought I should address something. I, while I get Hudson unhooked and ready to go here, um, a couple videos ago, or actually a few videos, I've talked about parking. It's kind of a perfect time since uh, we're seeing parking here again with the van accessibility. I don't know if you ever saw the other one and now you're seeing this. I'm not as bothered by that not having a spot because those people have the right to park there. And in the other video, I was saying that people have the right to park in handicapped accessible parking spots, disabled spots. Some of the spots though are labeled as van accessible. That does not mean that people with handicapped placards aren't allowed to park there. They are. 
And so I'm not actually frustrated with anyone who doesn't have a wheelchair accessible, a wheelchair lift uh, that needs the van parking spot. I'm not upset with the people who park there. I am upset with the fact that there's not a different set of rules basically where these van accessible spots are not accessible for people that don't have a wheelchair lift because it feels like a good 75% or more of the time there's nowhere to park because the van accessible spots are all taken and 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 it's hard when there's you know three disabled spots that are close to the entrance and then a van accessible spot and the three accessible spots are empty but the van accessible spot is taken up by a car that doesn't have a lift a car that could, they can just get out of the door so it's it's not the person who's parking there that I'm frustrated with it's the fact that the rules allow them to there should be a, a separate set of licensing that happens because we don't have a choice to park in those other three spots we only have that spot to park in we don't have the choice that if all of the handicapped spots are taken somebody who can park in a typical parking or in a in a non van accessible spot can still park in a typical spot however they might be farther away from the door which still sucks but at least they can still find a place to park and get out of the car just a little more inconvenienced for the say the distance that they have to travel versus we just don't have anywhere to park i can park at the very back of a parking lot as far away from the store as as possible and i've done this and then somebody will park in the spot next to us that's not van accessible because i'm parked in a typical spot and there's just no getting in or out of the of the van so the difference is not the, the 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 anger the frustration is not with the people who are parking there the frustration is that that the rules need to be changed as far as van accessible it should be van accessible only there should be a separate placard for that because we are worse than limited when it comes to parking spots because we have a wheelchair lift. I hope that clears it up. All right, we're going to the appointment. <laughs> okay, we are in a room. In fact, like right next door was where she got her Botox. What, three weeks ago? Was it three weeks ago, kid? I said, what is this appointment for? I said, it's like a follow-up for the Botox, which is not happened before i don't know what i i don't know um but we're just we're just hanging out i don't i don't know that we should have gotten out of school early for this i feel like this could have been a telehealth appointment but it is what it is so uh so that's what's going on i'll give you more information when we get out of here but there's nothing to see nothing to see in here
Okay, like I said, it's gonna be kind of a nothing appointment. The only thing he uh, did talk about is that in the next probably year or so, he wants to talk about a uh, hand brace or two uh, for Hudson's wrists, the way they're pulling out. Uh, he wants something that'll just kind of hold it in position so they don't progress any further. I can't even go that far. Um, so it's still something we'll that, that he just brought up so we can think about it. We'll talk about it at say the next Botox appointment in six months or even a year from now and decide, decide if we're gonna do something like that. All right, we're gonna make the hot drive home and uh, it is 2.22 so we're running about by the time we get to the house, probably 20 minutes late as far as giving her her second lunch, but it is what it is. It's, it's back there with you, kid. Let's we'll give it to you as soon as we get to the house. And I'm hungry, too.